All right, y'all, we back with another slapped hand reaction. Get right into it. How you doing? I'm Callan, and this is Slapped Ham. You're about to see some of the most mysterious videos going around the internet. So smash that subscribe button right now and get ready for some creepy content. Just like this. See what we got. Let's see what we got. Our first clip of the day was uploaded to Instagram by the Paranormal Viking. An employee allegedly caught this wild piece of footage while working the night shift at a morgue. Take a look. <coughs> it's not known where exactly this footage was taken, but it's believed to be somewhere in South America. Some commenters ignored that unsettling feeling that this footage conjures up and suggested that it might just be a hoax. Perhaps magnets through the wall or even a remote control gurney. I don't know. Others, however, said it's irrefutable proof of a spirit haunting the property. And given the setting of a morgue, many agree. Oh, yeah. I'm... So where do you sit on <clears throat> this irksome footage? Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Down below. Could be a spirit. <clears throat> could be remote control, but the way, or like, it could just be like the way the hall is, the way it's leveled. Four That's daring paranormal researchers and YouTubers <clears throat> embarked on an so, eerie adventure to uncover the truth behind the notorious I'm not saying either or is it. I'm just the real life inspiration for the spine tingling movie, The Conjuring. Matt Benton, <clears throat> Joe Fatale, just, Bill Cook, and Eric Connor set out to investigate the chilling claims of supernatural occurrences in this historic farmhouse, Don't leaving no stone know. unturned no. in their quest <clears throat> for the unexplained. The humble Harrisville farmhouse, yeah, I located wasn't there. at 1677 I was Round Top Road that. in Harrisville, Rhode yeah. Island, is an 18th century structure with a sinister reputation. While The Conjuring was not filmed here, the terrifying events portrayed in the film supposedly took place within its walls during the 1970s, when the Perrin family called it home. Since the release of The Conjuring back in 2013, the house has become a magnet for paranormal enthusiasts and skeptics seeking glimpses of the otherworldly. In 2019, Corey and Jennifer Heinzen purchased the property, transforming it into an official tourist attraction. Visitors could explore the house during daylight hours, participate in night investigations, and even attend live-streamed events. However, the Heinzens soon found themselves overwhelmed by the demand of running a popular haunted house, leading them to put it up for sale. In May 2022, <coughs> the house found a new owner in Jacqueline Nunez, a Boston-based developer who shares a strong belief in the paranormal. Nunez decided to continue the Heinzen's mission, offering tours, investigations, and private events at the house. However, she chose not to reside there full time, citing the powerful energy Damn. within. While the house was not featured in the movie, the Perrin family's real life experiences inside were more terrifying than any Hollywood script. The Perrin family, devout Roman Catholic, moved into the house in January 11th, 1971, only to encounter inexplicable phenomena almost immediately. Their initial experiences included <coughs> objects mysteriously moving, like, bro, strange you know, sounds, movies, really, and even piles of dirt appearing really pay attention on freshly to them. cleaned floors. The Perrin daughters reported seeing spirits, with some being benign and others malevolent. The spirit that took center stage in the movie, Bathsheba, was deemed to be the most malevolent of all, believing herself to be the mistress I've seen, uh, of the house. Three. It was the alright. I like the first escalated one. escalated with terrifying encounters, the first including one was the, best the smell one. of rotting flesh, mm. levitating beds, and unexplained cold presences. The Warrens, renowned paranormal investigators, made multiple visits to the house to document the activity. During one seance, Carolyn Perrin allegedly became possessed, speaking in tongues and levitating in her chair. The true story of The Conjuring, rooted in the Perrin family's experiences, is far more chilling than the cinematic adaptation. Bathsheba yeah, Sherman, yeah, you would a think real so, historic huh? figure connected to the <clears throat> property, added an extra layer of horror to the tale. The Perrins believed that Bathsheba's malevolent spirit tormented them. Armed with his spine-tingling backstory, the fearless paranormal investigators ventured into the house to uncover the truth. 
Their journey began with an interview with paranormal investigator John Huntington, who had spent time in the house and shared eerie footage of inexplicable events. The first piece shows John filming a door after hearing some strange noises. A second piece of chilling footage captured by John shows him exploring one of the living rooms. When out of nowhere, a woman's voice can be heard saying, hello. This little guy just grabbed my camera. There's a car going by. Hello. A third piece presented by John shows some security camera footage captured from inside of the home. Another clip shows something eerie happening in the library. Later, while sitting in the living room, John tries to capture an EVP or electronic voice phenomena. What he captures is nothing short of frightening. Take a listen. Okay, recording. Who is here with us? Who is here with us? Did I just hear what I what I think I heard? Having talked to witnesses and looking into the backstory, the investigation begins in earnest with the team setting up their equipment and settling in for a very long night. I'm working on this new You think case. I'm gonna do that shit? Like missing scientist. Frozen solid. I've seen that before, years ago. The night country. I ain't it fucking with no goddamn spirits. One not me. Once inside the house, the team encounters strange noises, footsteps, and unexplained <clears throat> creaking sounds, indicating a haunting presence. Yeah, that whole session was weird, dude. I was getting weird. Dude, when you said that, though, I had like, I just like felt like my like my eyes just rolled back, and then I got really dizzy for a second. That was weird. That's scary. I ain't no goddamn ghostbuster. Position stationary no. cameras throughout the home. Yeah, no. To capture paranormal activity on film. Their vigilance pays off when the home soon security I, system detects something. As soon as I hear something, hear something that ain't right, I'm gone. I feel like bro. I should do. I should do a tarot reading. It's moving. It's moving. <laughs> If I was to do that, like for content, though, seems to move all right. by itself. It'd be cool, man. But I'm saying, I'm telling y'all, as soon as I hear something strange, bro, I'm gone. Later, during a spirit box session, eerie voices emerge from the box, further unsettling the investigators. That was so clear. That now so clear. As the investigation continues, the team reflects on the chilling footage and experiences. Well, leave now, you leave. The house. Hell, that could be me. And that is truly paranormal phenomena. Something we don't exactly understand yet and defies our known laws of physics. Science always changes. One day we might have some of the answers, but until then, we will keep searching. <laughs> the question remains, is this old farmhouse truly haunted? The unsettling findings and hair-raising encounters documented by these paranormal researchers leaves us pondering the mysteries that still lurk within the walls of the old Harrisville farmhouse.
Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, the real-life horrors experienced by the Perrin family and the ongoing investigations at this infamous location continue to captivate the imagination and challenge our understanding of the unexplained. I highly recommend watching the entire investigation as it contains evidence and stories that we've not been able to cover here. As always, I'll put links in the description box down below. In a viral TikTok video uploaded by user Paranormal Vibes, viewers are thrust into a spine I ain't finna be the one to get attacked by no goddamn spirit. on her first Tell day me. on the job, rehearsing a video introduction. Not me. Night. Wow, it's 10 p.m. and my day was fully booked with showings of this vintage 1963 logo. Little did she know, this would be far from a typical property visit. The video begins innocently enough with the real estate agent standing inside the living room of a bungalow built back in 1963. As she begins her introduction, detailing the history I mean, of the Cameron, old home, <coughs> the camera not the facing that happens. Way. Wow, it's 10 p.m. and my day was fully booked with showings of this vintage 1963 bungalow. It could have been a person. Just you didn't hear. I ain't hear no she footsteps. Then grabs the camera and begins walking around the empty house. Oh no! I, yeah, I ain't, I'm. I'm not sure about this. One. Go ahead. She's not finna be naive to it. Like, oh yeah, that's. As she walks around the old home, she finds no one anywhere. Oh no! That's. <clears throat> Maybe he left or she left. Towards the end of the clip, something even more chilling begins uh, to see, happen. Let's see, let's see though, let's see. Take a look. Let's go further into it. Don't take this too serious, y'all, please. <coughs> this speculation, this it. Oh, shit, oh, shit. Watching that again, the smoke detector actually falls from the roof. The agent then leaves the home in a panic and the clip abruptly ends. So the question on everyone's mind is, is this quaint 1963 bungalow truly haunted? The viral TikTok video leaves viewers pondering the eerie events you know, that unfolded see nobody right there either, so I'm like, house tour. I don't know. You know, shit be edited, bro. The people just be doing stuff just for the attention from the internet. That, that, that second part though, that's crazy. So this next say. one isn't paranormal at all, but it's definitely it's weird. Crazy. It's August 2022 and Crystal, known as Recover Together 22 on TikTok, is doing some shopping at her local Dollar Tree in Coventry, Rhode Island, when she suddenly notices something quite odd. Take a look. There is not one employee in this store. There's a line for everyone to check out and no employee in sight. There's not one employee in the entire store. And uh, nobody can check out. Hello? I think somebody walked off the job, guys. She checks the office, the bathrooms, the aisles. There's no one anywhere, save for a few other customers looking confused. And uh, we can't get anybody to respond, nothing. No one's back there? Wow. Eventually, Crystal calls the police. The girls did. No one's back there. The officers do a thorough search to make sure no one's passed out or injured themselves, but they find no employees anywhere. And went to check out and realized that there's nobody in the store. The office door is wide open. There's nobody in here. Soon everyone begins to suspect that someone walked out on the job, leaving the <coughs> store wide open. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think somebody the, walked the, off the job. What other right? explanation could it be? Naturally, these clips <clears throat> went viral with millions of people tuning in to find out what happened. In a follow up That's comment, what I was thinking, Crystal though, like, elaborates somebody that she later found out. out that the last employee had the employee. left about an hour prior and yeah. didn't bother to lock the doors. So let me know what you would do in this exact situation. Lock the doors, bro? Let me know in the comments down That's below. Crazy. There is not one employee <clears throat> in the store. I'm thinking like, like, they just left like, you got me grinning. went out or something like that on break or something. And I want to Real quick. But if you're the only one there, like, what the hell? And I'm dreaming my dream. Here's another odd little one uploaded to Instagram by the user I Beat the Times. It's definitely weird and needs no introduction. Are we fire? A man is pushing a flaming pram down the street. What the f are you doing? Ah. What are you doing? A passing motorist slows down to see what's going on. Are we fire? <clears throat> Bro, just push, push it. I don't think there's any way to rationalize this one. On, so that's on fire. Like, what are you what doing? Are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? Fire. Are we fire? <laughs> you like how I look or something? I don't know. Before we take a look at an extraordinary tale of survival in the Montana wilderness, remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel <laughs> notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our scary and intriguing videos. In the heart of the Bob Marshall wilderness in Montana, a tale of survival and the inexplicable unfolded as Mike Stevenson, a Montana native and seasoned outdoorsman, found himself facing a perilous predicament in the unforgiving wilderness. Stevenson's chilling encounter with the unknown has left a mark on his life that still resonates with awe and wonder more than four decades later. The story begins with Stevenson, then a 20-year-old outfitter and trapper who had chosen to spend his second winter alone in the vast wilderness miles away from civilization. His mission was to trap pine marten, beaver and other fur-bearing animals. Stevenson had set up a base camp in three remote spike camps, each a day's snowshoe journey apart where he could take refuge while checking his traps. On one fateful winter day, Stevenson embarked on a trek to check some beaver traps several miles away from his base camp. As daylight dwindled and the snowfall intensified, Stevenson realized he was dangerously far from safety. Night had fallen and the raging blizzard had engulfed the landscape in an impenetrable darkness. The situation grew dire as Stevenson's sense of direction waned and hypothermia threatened to overtake him. However, a twist of fate intervened in the form of an owl. This owl, whose species Stevenson later identified as Bard, had frequented his hunting camp earlier in the season. It would perch atop a tall snag and hoot throughout the night, providing company to the solitude-seeking trapper. In his darkest hour, Stevenson heard the unmistakable hoot of the owl in the distance. Desperation led him to follow the sound of the owl's calls, with each hoot providing a glimmer of hope. The owl led him through the pitch black forest, guiding him past treacherous terrain and preventing him from plummeting into a dangerous drop near Big Salmon Creek. Stevenson's harrowing journey came to an end when he stumbled upon the woodpile near his camp and he was able to ignite a life-saving fire. The owl's mysterious guidance had not only led him to safety, but it also saved him from peril. Reflecting on that life-altering night, Stevenson's voice resonates with wonder and reverence. He attributes his survival to what he describes as the medicine owl, a creature sent by the creator to offer help in the most extraordinary of circumstances. As the years have passed, Stevenson's connection to the natural world has deepened and he's become more attuned to the unseen forces that surround us. Through ceremonies and discussions with Blackfeet elders, he's come to appreciate that sometimes assistance arrives in the most unexpected and enigmatic forms. 
Mike Stevenson's encounter with the owl in the midst of a blizzard remains a testament to the mysteries of the wilderness and the inexplicable forces that can come to our aid when we need them most. Now, in case you haven't heard the awesome news, we've launched a brand new second channel. If you want to see the latest episode, check out that link on the top there. Yeah, let me know what y'all think of this video, though. It was another nice one. Some stuff, you know, be iffy. You know how they go. Uh, let me know.